Welcome to part two. This is a direct continuation of part one. So if you haven't seen that, then I would watch that first and then come back where you're going to be really confused when we get to the scene where there's a massacre at the wedding. Now, if you're brand new to all this audio stuff, you may have never seen anything other than the three and a half millimeter jack that's on your headphones. We've already talked about XLR, which will probably be coming out of your microphone. And the other common connector will be a quarter inch, which is like a headphone plug, but bigger. All of these connection types have a male connector, which is like your headphones have, and a female connector, which you get it. The point is you may run into a situation where you end up needing to connect two female ends of something, or you need to get a female XLR to a male quarter inch. Luckily, they sell adapters and connectors for all the stuff. So even if you've never seen something, just search for it, it probably exists. So now that you have a microphone, you now need a mixer. And most of the things from here on out will be assuming that you're using XLR microphones. Mixers often look intimidating the first time you see them because there's lots of knobs. Good news is they aren't quite as complicated as they look. Your mixer will take the sound from your microphone. You'll be able to tweak it in different ways, and then you can send it back out, probably to two, maybe to three places. The first place you'll be sending it to is the computer so that OBS or whatever software you're using can use it and I'll link a video on the different ways to do that. The second place you'll send the audio is back to your own headphones. If there's just one announcer, you can just plug right into the headphone out on your mixer, but the chances are you'll have multiple announcers. So for this, you will need a headphone amplifier, which is a little box that you can find for around $30. And you connect the mixer out into this little box, and it generally gives four headphone outputs, each with its own little volume knob. This is nice because now you can have two or three announcers and you can spread out as much as you want. So back to mixers. They have big mixers and they have little mixers. If you've only got two announcers, don't just buy a mixer with only two inputs. I mean, you could, but you usually want to give yourself a little room to expand just in case because either, hey, someone else wants to jump on a broadcast for a few minutes or you need room for our next topic, which is the secondary or atmospheric microphones, I guess we could call them. Now you may not realize this, but when you watch a game on television, there are microphones everywhere. They are all around the field. They are on the basketball hoop backboards. Guys are holding them on the sidelines. They are inside or on foul poles. There are even microphones inside the padding of some NFL linemen. Now, there's a reason why your broadcast will not have a professional feel right off the bat, namely because they cost a crazy amount of money. An NFL broadcast can take over a hundred people to pull off. There is a lot that you do not see. But say you're happy with your announcer audio, what are the next few things you can do to step your game up? One is a crowd microphone, which can add a lot, especially if you're inside a press box with a closed window. All this takes is finding a spot outside where you can put a mic that won't be bothered and run an XLR cable to it. If you're on the road traveling with a team, then these secondary microphones are gonna be a little tougher, but you can still generally always point a microphone out of an open press box window. And it's not gonna be incredible, but it'll be better than nothing. Just make sure that it's not picking up your voice if you're announcing near it. The second place you can point a microphone is toward the field and try to get some on-field action. Now, this will vary a lot from sport to sport. You can find other videos out there that will explain it on a sport by sport basis, but it might be something as simple as for like baseball, you can point it at home plate. I didn't do this in my setup, so I can't really give you a personal recommendation on the best type of microphone to use. I know the parabolic microphones are used a lot to provide longer range, but they often get up to at least $500, even for the smaller ones. So when doing microphones like these, which may be quite a ways away from your mixer, can you use some type of wireless transmitter? Yes, I've seen them around $200 for both the transmitter and the receiver, although they're usually more. Although like most quote unquote wireless sound, you generally need to plug in the receiver and the transmitter. So there's a wire, but they do sound good. That said, you can run an XLR cable for about a hundred feet. And there are lots of ways to do it over an even longer distance. There's also the option to use an adapter that will allow you to convert either an RCA three and a half millimeter or XLR connection to like cat five ethernet cable which will allow for some very long runs at a much lower cost because you can get Cat5 or Cat6 cable for not a ton of money. You can find cheaper versions for less than like $20. I used one, it worked great. I think I ran it 75 feet. 
but the higher end ones claim that you can run an Ethernet cable over like half a mile. And I'm not speaking figuratively when I say that, it's like thousands of feet. Although I can't say I've ever actually seen a demonstration of that. So what other sources can we bring in here? I know a guy who used to walk down to the field before a game, interview a player or a coach on a little audio recorder, and he'd walk right back up, plug that recorder into his mixer, and play the interview as part of his pregame show. So any sound you can get out of a recorder like that, or a phone or a computer, you could use into your mixer. And if you have a producer, that would be really neat to have audio playing under you as you come back from a commercial break or something like that. So speaking of producers, they can be really helpful and boost the quality of a broadcast. In addition to handling all the technical stuff, they can be checking your levels, throwing music on at certain points, like we just said, or even doing research about stats relevant to the game. There are people handing professional announcers notes all the time throughout games. I don't recommend just trying to talk the whole time, even through where a commercial break typically would be, because that's a lot of talking for a long time. You need to give yourself a break. Even if your commercials are just silence or some quiet music, just make sure it's not copyrighted. Um, if you're using YouTube, they have a list of songs that you can download and use. Another option is to have the color analyst take care of the production aspect if you have one. Now there are pros and cons to them either being right beside you or being away in a different spot. The nice thing about being remote is that they can often have a bit more space, which is especially helpful if you have a lot of video equipment as well. They can also monitor things through speakers rather than headphones that they want. That's just personal preference. The downside is you'll probably need to run microphone cables a bit further. And obviously they can't pass you notes. Although Google Docs is a thing if you both share the same one at the same time and one person can type to the other so they can see it. Or you can give your producer his own microphone and connect things in such a way that his sound can be heard by the announcers in their headphones but not over the main mix. And this is perfect for saying stuff like, hey, we're coming back from the commercial and giving a countdown. You have to either have the right kind of mixer or a second mixer to be able to do that. But having done it, it's really cool to have that option. And I mean, it beats walkie talkies or texting back and forth, but hey, whatever works. One final thing on producers. If you are the announcer and the person buying and setting all this stuff up, make sure that your producer at least has a basic idea of how everything works meaning like the sound flow of what is coming in from where. If something stops working in the middle of the game, you don't want to have to stop your broadcast to troubleshoot. You want your producer to at least to be able to think, oh, the field microphone isn't working. Maybe something came loose in this spot or that spot. I'm gonna run down and check it or send someone else to check those connections. So now what? Pull out a sheet of paper, draw a diagram with all the parts that you'll need. It doesn't have to be pretty. Draw little microphones for each one you have. Don't forget about your announcer headphones include all the connector types of each parts and how long does each cord need to be, then number all of those microphones and headphones and adapters and cords and list them off. And that's the easiest way that you're gonna be able to get a general idea of where you're at and what you need and your price range, and then you can adjust accordingly from there. So hopefully that'll give you a good start into broadcasting on a budget and learning some of this stuff for the first time. So if you have a really tight budget, then obviously a reoccurring theme was can I do it this way? Or can I do it that way? Can I do it without a mixer? Can I do it with this microphone that I found on the clearance shelf at the dollar store? Can I broadcast through a potato? And the answer is usually probably yes, but there is also usually a catch or a trade-off. And it's just up to you to figure out that balance. So good luck. Thanks for watching.